I'm Jimmy Smith, the Director General of the International Livestock Research Institute, and I want to tell you a little bit about ILRI today. Over the last several decades, up until the early 2000s, agriculture was a very neglected sector. Agriculture investments precipitously declined from about 15% of ODA to about 2.5% in the early 2000s. However, the world food price crisis of 2008 and reoccurring ones since then have elevated the agriculture agenda high up on the global development agenda. So the challenge, of course, is how we will feed the world and what can be the contribution of livestock and, as we do that, address the issue of poverty and environmental sustainability. First, I'd like to say that livestock is 40% of agriculture GDP and growing fairly rapidly. Four of the top five agricultural commodities by value are livestock, even though they are hardly mentioned in the global debate. And in Africa, four of the top 10 agricultural commodities are livestock. So livestock is quite important in terms of the global food and poverty agenda. No matter which region we look at, livestock contribution to agriculture GDP is growing as fast as the rest of agriculture, and in most cases, faster. Per capita consumption in the developing parts of the world, for example in Africa, is only 13 kilograms when consumption in North America, for example, is 125 kilograms of meat per person. The growth in demand for livestock products is happening everywhere. No matter which region we look at, as you can see from this slide, and no matter which commodity of livestock we look at, there is growth. And between now and 2030, the demand for various livestock commodities will grow variously from 50% in the case of pork to up to 600% in the case of poultry. It is important to note though that although we speak so much about trade, there is very little trade in livestock products in, in relation to the whole. Less than 15% of the total livestock commodities are traded. The point here is that while trade is important, local markets matter more. And these local markets in the case of livestock commodities are mostly informal. So as we attempt to deal with meeting the demand for livestock products, we must work on the informal markets as much as we work on the formal ones. So what's then the global development agenda uh, that livestock faces? First, livestock contributes uh, to the livelihoods of over a billion people. And so there is a great opportunity for us in this rising demand for livestock products to integrate small farmers into markets. And for us, that's a big opportunity to contribute both to food security, but also to the challenges of reducing poverty. Livestock currently produces about 58 million tons of protein annually, and 17% of the global calories. Livestock commodities is not considered a caloric intensive commodity, but rather one from which we get protein, and the amount of protein that is expected uh, that would be required is going to grow rapidly over the next several years. Also, about one billion people rely on livestock for their livelihoods in the developing world. And these uh, people, relatively poor in rural areas, needs attention 
so that they will not only contribute to the f global food equation, but they will also uh, simultaneously reduce their poverty. But as we know, livestock are not all good. There are also some bads about livestock. They contribute significantly to greenhouse gas emissions. And depending on whose calculation you, s you look at, somewhere between 14 and 26 percent. So as we integrate smallholders into markets, we must be sure that we give them the tools to cut the carbon footprint of livestock. As livestock populations have been growing around the world, intensification in close proximity to human population, disease challenges have emerged more and more. And these mostly include, but are not limited to, the zoonotic diseases which can go from humans to livestock and livestock to humans. So we must attend to the animal health issues and, and human health in that context as well. There's also the challenges often posed to us about both malnutrition on the one hand and obesity on the other. So while in many developing countries consumption is rather low and there is an opportunity to increase that consumption in order to contribute to better diets and therefore uh, better nutrition and health, there is also the concern even in developing countries about obesity people who consume too much. But there are also many other things that livestock contribute to the rural poor. These are what we refer to as the non-tradables, such as manure, which some say, for example, in India is about 50% of the nitrogen that is used in crop farming. And of course, traction and fuel. In addition, to the enormous cultural values that livestock hold for people since ancient times. In our efforts to address the global livestock agenda, we see ourselves working in three broad systems. The first are uh, those systems where the possibilities for growth uh, are quite high and where there is good market access, where we can increase the productivity of livestock so that smallholders can contribute to the global food equation and at the same time use that to escape poverty. But we also have very fragile environments in which livestock are produced in the drylands, for example, where pastoralism is the main means of livelihood. And there, there is very little opportunity to increase the production and productivity of livestock to intensify systems. Rather, the challenges there are more to put safety nets under those who are very vulnerable to changing climate and, of course, harsh ecological conditions. The third system is those systems with high growth but also externalities. These are what we refer to as the factory farms, large intensive farms found in many parts of the developed world but also increasingly in the developing world. And there the issues are of how you dispose of manure and how you deal with the issues of livestock diseases. We see a very marginal role for ILRI in these systems. But we also know that small systems, small scale farming in the developing world will over time increase in size. So this is not a category of system that we will ignore entirely, but we will not be at this time be putting a great emphasis on. We are addressing these livestock issues through what is now known as the CGIR research programs. As you can see from this figure, those that are in red are the ones in which ILRI have a stake. The first one, livestock and fish, we lead, and we are major players in the other seven CRPs. And so we are addressing our agenda through these new CGIAR research programs that are giving us huge access not only to our traditional partners who are the other CGIAR research centers,
but many development partners as well in both the developed and developing world. As you know, we are a very strong player, well recognized for our efforts in gender and equity issues. We are a strong player in building resistance for producers in marginal areas. We are innovators in the value chains for various livestock commodities. We are a significant player in dealing with zoonotic diseases and food safety. And of course, feed an intractable problem for livestock systems is an area in which we are engaged as well. And the whole issue of livestock and the environment, and that goes in two ways. The effects of livestock on the environment, but also the effects of the environment on, on livestock. Such things as, for example, how does environment affect disease dynamics, but also how does changing climate affect natural resource accessibility and use. That's on what we call our integrated science side. But we also have what is known as the biosciences area, where most of the work go on in laboratories. We are now an increasingly important player in vaccinology, in genomics, in breeding, and of course in what is known as the Becker Ilry Hub, where we have world-class biosciences facilities that are being used not just for livestock, but for plant sciences in this area as well. In the future, we will strengthen our work in genomics and gene delivery, food, feed biosciences, and in poultry genetics. So what does it really look like in terms of staff resources and uh, budgets at the present time? We are an institute of 700 staff around the world and a budget of about $60 million annually and growing. We operate in about 30 scientific disciplines and we have over 120 senior scientists with many more junior scientists from 39 developing countries. 56% of our internationally recruited staff are from developing countries. So increasingly developing countries scientists are making stronger and stronger contributions to our research program. 34% of our internationally recruited staff are women. We are very proud of this record and we need to improve on it. And we operate out of two large campuses in Kenya and Ethiopia and in about 20 other sites around the world in Africa, South and Southeast Asia. And we are looking at how we might engage in Latin America and in Central Asia. Thank you very much.